today I'll be talking about how we can address global visual impairment prevalence through assistive technology. But first, a little bit about me. So my name is Tiffany Gay. I'm a rising junior at Orlando Science High School. I'm very passionate about electrical engineering and computer science, but especially as it relates to medicine. I'm interested in seeing how the principles of computer science and engineering can be used to enhance modern medicine. I've participated in science research for six years and I've presented my work both locally and internationally. In school, I'm heavily involved in Science Olympiad, FBLA, and the Student Government Association. And outside of school, I serve as the Director of Communications for a 501c3 nonprofit, Kathir, which works to provide career aid for young immigrants and refugees. I also regularly volunteer at my local hospital and I play violin recreationally. But now to the main topic of discussion. 2.2 billion people globally are impacted by a form of visual impairment. And visual impairment is an umbrella term, including many different types of eye diseases and disorders, such as diabetic retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, glaucoma, and cataracts. Visual impairment affects people of all age groups. However, it disproportionately affects those in lower income regions. As you can see here in this chart from the American Academy of Ophthalmology, the amount of people with presbyopia, a visual impairment disorder, are significantly more in lower income regions, such as East Asia and South Asia. In comparison, in higher income areas, such as North America and Asia Pacific, there are less people with presbyopia. Visual impairment also affects the quality of life for those impacted. In children, you see delayed motor, social, emotional, and cognitive development causing lifelong consequences. And in adults, you see lower workforce productivity and higher rates of depression and anxiety. Visual impairment affects many aspects of people's lives. Additionally, visual impairment poses a global financial burden. It's not all bad news though. The Lancet Global Health Journal says that technological developments offer the potential to revolutionize eye health care in the next decade by delivering affordable, high quality services to remote areas. Now, what technologies is the Lancet Journal referencing? In this presentation, I will be covering assistive technologies and some of the work I've done to improve the assistive technology for the visually impaired community. Now, what is assistive technology? By definition, it's any tool, piece of equipment, software program, or product system that is used to maintain or improve a person's functional capabilities. For the visually impaired, this includes things like the white cane you see here in this image, or guide dogs that help them navigate and ultimately give those with visual impairment a greater sense of independence. These assistive technologies are incredibly important as they give those with visual impairment a greater quality of life. As you can see here in a study published by the National Library of Medicine, demand for assistive technology has significantly increased over the years. In a case study done in a Saudi blind school, 82% of blind students said that they use assistive technology several times a day, demonstrating its importance in the visually impaired community's lives. However, despite this growing need for assistive technology, the market is slow moving. Many proposed solutions have not been widely accepted by the visual community, primarily due to their expensive nature, making them inaccessible to the people who need them the most. In my research, I hope to solve the problems in these current solutions by proposing a more affordable and effective alternative for the visually impaired. So let's dive a little bit into my research. I'm in my third year of research now, but my most recent title was Designing a Novel LiDAR Navigation System with Haptic Feedback, Bluetooth, and App Integration for the Visually Impaired. Now let's break down this title a little bit. For my research, I essentially created a new assistive technology. As you can see here in the top left, I created a visor that uses multiple sensors to detect obstacles in a visually impaired user's environment. And if an obstacle is detected, someone who's visually impaired would feel a vibration in the direction of that obstacle. And this vibration would become more intense as the visually impaired user is becoming closer in proximity to an obstacle. Additionally, this device has knobs to adjust the intensity of the vibration, and it also has Bluetooth capabilities to connect to an app for an alternate form of audio feedback. The ultimate goal of this project was to help people with visual impairments understand their environment and then use that information to help them navigate. Now let's talk about testing and outreach because once I'd created this device, I really wanted to see its potential for impact on the visually impaired community. 
For my testing, I wanted to analyze the efficiency of the device and as aforementioned, its potential for impact. I ran 15 trials of experimentation and had 16 blindfolded human subjects navigate this maze. Eight of them would navigate wearing the device and eight of them would navigate not wearing the device. After my 15 trials, I found that participants without the LiDAR navigation device took on average more time to navigate the maze as compared to participants without the LiDAR navigation device, proving its efficiency as a learning tool for the visually impaired community. Once I had established that this assistive technology was effective, I wanted to raise awareness about the potential impact of technology on the visually impaired community. I was able to present my work both on local and national news outlets, raising awareness about the importance of assistive technology and truly making a global impact. I was also able to present my research at the Taiwan International Science Fair and a host of other international fairs where I spoke with leading scientists and professionals about my work and raised awareness about the importance of assistive technology in making a difference on the visual impaired community. I also spoke at a variety of symposiums, and this one was the International Symposium on Systems Engineering, where I was able to interact and test with a visually impaired engineer. In the future, I'm working with a local school of the blind to make assistive technologies more accessible for the visually impaired community. As I draw this presentation to an end, I would like to highlight the importance of assistive technologies and science in making a difference on the 2.2 billion people globally who are impacted by visual impairments. Thank you so, so much for listening. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me with my email here, and I have a QR code for my LinkedIn as well. And here are some of my acknowledgments. Thank you all again for listening, and I encourage everyone to look towards assistive technologies and science in making a difference for the visually impaired community.